So you uh, made a decision then to leave Europe, I, to I, leave Hungary? I didn't <coughs> know because even though, you see, by that time I uh, uh, had a second operation on my back because I had a relapse and I was uh, in pain. I cannot describe it to you. And, I had, and it was in March 1956, so I said, nobody needs a Hungarian-speaking uh, person uh, to do any office job, physical uh, work. I cannot perform. What am I doing there? Because she wanted to come, but the minute the Russians came in and it was relatively safe to start to go again westward, she wanted to go. I, I didn't want to go. I said, Mommy, I, I, I can't. What am I going to do over there? You know, we wanted to go originally. I said, Israel doesn't need the cripples. They need strong people who can work. So that's but when you she made was a decision the, to... She was, she was the one, bless her, who made the decision because she brought my daughter to me. I remember it. But you want to see her in your life again? She said, so of course I want Then you come because I am going and I am taking her with me. So, and I am blessing her ever since. At the beginning it was awfully hard. When you came to Canada? Yes, yes. When first, did you uh, arrive in first Canada? First we, we had to stay for half a year in uh, Vienna because I had that, uh, uh, I told you that that auntie who was the only smart person in retrospect who left Hungary in time you know, and, uh, and uh, we wanted uh, to go there, but uh, the quota was filled, so it was impossible. So we waited, and finally a good chance came that they were looking for some uh, sewing people there, so she was selected, and with the, one of the last people we were lucky enough to come to Canada, which I am when very grateful When did you arrive in Canada? 57 July. And uh, what have you done? Since your arrival Anything in Canada, anything and Canada. everything. Then, yeah, you know, I, your I, main I, I was. I, um, there, there was. Uh, it's no wonder I was afraid to go there because uh, I didn't get a job, so I had to take a job as a, as a shipper, and it was such a cheap person that uh, he didn't even had uh, something uh, a pulley to to. I had to carry. Uh, 60, 80 pound uh, packages to the third floor, so I got a stomach bleeding you never saw in your life. Uh, so, but finally, you know, one step led the other, and then finally I got a little bit better. I got a job first as a night uh, uh, supervisor, and then uh, things got better and better and better. And uh, uh, then I went to work uh, to the, for the Jewish community, and from in then what on, city? In uh, Montreal. We lived all the time. We just came uh, a few years back. I want to ask you um, briefly, in Montreal, what was the reaction of the Canadian Jewish population and the Polish survivors to you as a Hungarian survivor? Well, we heard that very, very many times that uh, uh, and I have to say it in Yiddish, it sounds very, very good, and then I will translate it to you that the Ingeres Yidens in Nishka Yidens, the Hungarian Jews are not Jews because they read in Yiddish, they, they don't speak Yiddish. And I, I made a point that I picked up a little bit of Yiddish, I picked up a little bit of, of the English, not so, not so little, because I was working at night and at dawn when I went home and everybody was still asleep. I took the paper and so on and so forth, and I studied. And uh, step by step, <coughs> I worked myself up, thank God. And uh, in uh, 1970, uh, early, very early 1970s, I, I became the controller of uh, Temple Emanuel, which is an enormous, beautiful, like Holy Blossom here in Toronto, uh, Reform Shul, where they loved me and respected me in spite of the fact that they knew I was an Orthodox Jew. And uh, then even a better uh, opportunity came up, and I became uh, the executive director of uh, Solomon Schechter Academy, which is uh, affiliated with the United Synagogue. It's a big, big Jewish day school.